I'm Phil Seatek, 360 Creative Coach, and in this episode, I want to kind of have a self-reflection moment, both for myself, but also I invite you to do the same, right? And what I want to reflect upon in this episode is kind of the morality of, of characters that we create with an art. More specifically, I have been just kind of going back and rewatching, you know, episodes that I grew up on that I enjoyed and through the prism of you know my own growth the the world as it has changed in general I, I see things differently, right? And it's wildly fascinating to me. Now before I fully dive into this though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So let's get into this. Um, you know, to further contextualize this, I'm thinking of characters, specifically white male characters, because Let's face it, a lot of them in TV, certainly up, uh, even nowadays, tend to be that. Who are just absolutely heinous role models, right? Uh, you know, one of the easiest people that comes to mind is Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. There is an entire YouTube channel uh, called Zach Morris's Trash, and I highly encourage you to check it out because it's both eye-opening as well as comedic of just how heinous of a person Zach Morris was to everyone around him, right? And how he's just, he's just not a good person whatsoever. And yet he's the main character that we follow in Saved by the Bell and in many ways are rooting for. Ross from Friends objectively is deplorable. Uh, e from Entourage, like in hindsight, now knowing the business and it just basically almost ruins his friend's career because he's, he's a dick and more so he lies, manipulates, and is just basically a man child with women, right? Like, and... These are not good people, characters, and yet they're the crux of it and we're supposed to root for them. And what's interesting to think about, and well, number one, uh, even before I get into that, I would, like, it would be very interesting if you commented below and let me know TV characters that you used to, like, look up to that in hindsight probably weren't the best role models. I'm very curious, you know, I, I, I would love for us to like create this list. I think it'd be fun. But there's essentially two parts as I think about it. Number one, in terms of these specific shows, and it could be movies too, but shows, um, you spend a lot more time with a character. It's not like these are anti-heroes uh, that are meant we're supposed to empathize with and like are supposed to teach us a lesson, you know, that someone like a Walter White from Breaking Bad. No, like these are objectively through the show, people that we're supposed to root for. Um, and there's, you know, that they don't suffer a lot of consequences for their choices, not all the time. Like it, in the end, it always works out for them. Uh, and that's a fascinating aspect of it which leads into the second part of what responsibility as artists do we have to create like some sort of moral moral interjection within the work because it's in, the, the, the reason why it's interesting to me is i often try to write characters and i try to find ways to humanize them like i i try to not infuse this moral viewpoint where it's didactic. If anything, I, 
I try to observe life around me. And, and one of my big things is life is antagonistic enough. Um, you know, people, there is no villain. There's just forces of antagonism. And so I try to have my works of art kind of reflect that. Where, you know, it's not like this, this sort of like world ending aliens come down or whatever. It's just like life in general is the force of antagonism and just these clashing ideologies. And how does that, you know, push the characters to rethink things, to take the actions they take and so forth. So very much, and, and where do they, where do their ideologies come from, especially if they are, you know, flawed or seemingly flawed according to many people. So in that way, I never try to be judgmental of any character that I create. And one could argue that the examples that I gave, E from Entourage, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, Ross from Friends, maybe that was the point. But I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't quite think so. I mean, part of it is, it is a reflection of all those times. Um, so again, I think it's, it's a fine line between like honesty and truth telling, you know, like this just almost like through a documentary and documentarian prism where you're observing the world and laying it out for people and letting them assess. But I think that's kind of the key factor of it is you have to let people sort of assess it and make that determination for themselves. And in that way, it tends to be a more ambiguous or open-ended ending. Whereas the stuff that I'm pointing to tends to make a clear cut choice by the end of, okay, no, again, still, these are the good guys, right? Um, whether it knows it or not. And that's a very fascinating aspect to me of, yeah, just in general, like what responsibility do we have as artists to push any morality or not? And how do we think about the characters that we create and the effect that they might have on the world? Because by extension, you know, great storytelling can allow for that and essentially yeah it can can spread some <laughs> negative things um that is the power of storytelling and certainly people you know have wielded that power in the wrong way knowingly and that's you know that that, that that's even the worst but doing it unknowingly, you know, like if there's layers to this, it's doing it unknowingly. It's then the next tier is doing it knowingly. And then the worst as in storytelling is the negation of negation, which is uh, something masquerading as something else. So in this sense, uh, something that's supposed to be masquerading and inserting some sort of morality and yet knowingly destroying it. Um, a better, more easier example of what a negation of a negation is, let's say you have the value of love. Well, many people think the exact opposite is hate, and that is terrible. But the negation of negation, which is something even worse than hate, is, uh, which is hate masquerading as love, right? And I think about, you know, these characters in in that way, like many of them are just like negations, the negations. And yet I don't, I don't think that's the intention. Um, so, so it's why, I don't know, like, again, I don't know ultimately where I land on this. That's why it was a very reflective episode. And I want you to kind of consider that for your own self in whatever art you may be creating yourself. I mean, if it's, even if it's a song, even if it's photography, a painting, you know, whatever it may be, uh, you know, what message do we ultimately convey in this? And, you know, of course, like all things, sometimes works of art can be co-opted by the most heinous people. 
you know, certainly the red and blue pill from the Matrix has, you know, been co-opted by many people who don't actually even know the actual original message. Um, it's fascinating for me in my, with my most recent movie, A Bogota Trip, you know, um, there's a subplot within it that kind of, you know, it tries to find a balance and, and present the good and the bad of this certain subject matter. And yet people, <laughs> like after the screening, uh, essentially negated the counterbalance and just went to like, oh, the, the, the good effects of this and like so forth. And, um, you know, it's something that I believe in. But at the same time, you know, it's like, but be careful with it, right? And I'm being deliberately vague about it because I don't want to spoil the movie. But it, it, it's fascinating in that way, you know, uh, which is another wrinkle in this is regardless of your intent, people can then take it and interpret it however they will. And that is their prerogative as the audience members. So, yeah, I don't have a conclusion to all of this other than, at least for me, I think about this and it is something that I struggle with and, and, and try to be conscious of at the very least with the stuff that I create. So that way it is didactic, but then I'm also responsible with the storytelling, you know, and not just perpetuating stereotypes about people and um, so forth. And that in many ways I can be as honest as I can and whatever thing, whatever faults of the characters there are, there's a reason behind it versus just it being accidental or manipulative. I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong way to go it, about it, but at least for me, that's the conclusion. I, that, that, that's the mode of operating that I'm choosing at this particular moment in my life. And for all these reasons, because it is such a fascinating topic to me, with ramifications, really. I mean, art, as I said, influences people. So for that reason, I'm very curious to see how you look at this and what you think about this. Uh, please comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. I would love to have this discussion with you and hopefully we draw more and more people into this as we throw out ideas, you know, points, counterpoints, all that stuff. And as long as we're respectful, that's the, we can have fun with this. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Um, you know, if you appreciate the things that I do, I would invite you to check out my coaching. You know, um, if you think you can benefit from my direct interactions, then that's a possibility for you. Uh, a cheaper alternative is uh, my Patreon page, patreon.com slash philsvitek. There's various tiers of su support with, you know, rewards and things like that where we get to interact. Likewise, um, you know, another way to support me is through the books and the movies and merchandise that I sort of hinted at in this episode. Um, all that stuff is available to you. Uh, link to all this, by the way, is linked to in the description box. And supporting this stuff helps support this because, you know, by getting to create the book, uh, you know, the, the art that I want, I learn. And I, through this experience, I get to share it here with you. So that way, hopefully, you know, it, it uh, makes your creative journey at least a little bit easier. That is the hope. Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. I hope to see you next time.